The couple who live at number 69 are ordinary folk with an everyday story. She was depressed, her doctor prescribed tranquilizers, now she's a drug addict. The chairman of Wyeth, the drug company which made her tranquilizer, Ativan, lives in a rather different world in Pennsylvania, USA. Oh, the bastards, aren't they? To put me through bloody hell like this. Yeah, from what I know, I mean, it's been going on for years like this. I mean, they keep prescribing it and prescribing it, and yet people are going through hell. And yet wives are making money out of it. Yet they don't realise actually what we're re really going through. Mr. Corsgall, oh. perhaps you'd like to... One hundred and seventy lawyers and their clients are now preparing for the biggest ever battle over a drug, alleging negligence in making and marketing tranquilizers known as benzodiazepines and Ativan in particular. The vast majority of people who've been visiting their solicitors in recent months have been complaining about the side effects, the addictive effects of the drug Ativan. The signs to us are that this case has the potential to dwarf recent multiple drug litigation such as Opran. This is the drug, Ativan, chemical name Lorazepam, which is estimated to have produced around a quarter of a million addicts in Britain alone. So who's to blame? The doctors who prescribed Ativan, the company who made and promoted it, or both? Well, Ativan is the most problematic of these tranquilizers. It produces more severe withdrawal, and more people fail to withdraw from it. I think doctors should stop prescribing it, or even better, the manufacturers should stop selling it. Ativan is manufactured by Wyeth Ahurst of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Wyeth is part of a massive multinational group whose products range from pills to popcorn. But there's a certain pride in Ativan. As the company's latest annual report says, sales are up. Shortly after Ativan was introduced, they advertised it as the way to control patients. Fifteen years later, the Ativan addicts might agree with that. We asked Ada from Nottingham if she could manage without Ativan. No, I have to have them on me all the time. I carry them in my handbag all the time. Ada, why do you depend on Ativan? Because I feel safe with them. If I haven't got them, I think, Oh, gosh, I ain't got me Ativan. Where are they? Where are they? I've got them. So would you swap your packet of Ativan for two packets of the leading tranquilizer? Now, I think if I was going abroad and I got to the airport and I didn't have my Ativan, I would come all the way back home to get them. It's how bad they get it. Most users agree when the going gets tough, they can't stop taking Ativan. Ativan. Try living without it. The star of that mock commercial was Ada Nissity. She was prescribed Ativan more than a decade ago, following the death of her first husband. I've been taking Ativan for 11 years. When I took an Ativan, about 10 minutes later, I felt all right. But then gradually, as the Ativan wore off, you began to get these side effects with it. I mean, you can't keep taking one Ativan after another because you'd be doped up walking around in a daze. I would like everyone to know what the withdrawal symptoms are, and I am willing to do it. I will go through it because I want something done about it. The doctors are easy to prescribe the tablets and everything to you, but there is no remedy at all of getting you off the tablets. And I need help, and I think there's thousands of people out there that really need help as well. And I am willing, I, I will do it myself. I will go through it, although I know what to expect. Ada took her last Ativan at noon one Monday. Well, it's on standby in the viewfinder. I register now. Is that better? Now? Get... Her second husband, Emile, was shown how to film what happened. Oh, I've been awake all night. I'm tired. Uh, bloody head's pounding. I'm pounding, thumping headache. 
Go oh, my face went numb. God, is it really worth it? I mean, I'm tired out, dog. My head's thumping, my body's shaking. God. Stopping suddenly is both distressing and potentially dangerous. I feel louser, really ill. I've been up all night, I've not slept all night. My head is pounding. I mean, last night, all my face round it all went numb. I slapping it like that on the lip. It's numb, it's still a bit numb now. I can't feel anything in that. Would you come outside and do this interview? No way. No. I talked to you in the house, but not outside. I must probably collapse. That nervous? Mm-hmm. No, I didn't come outside. Don't ask me to go outside, please. No, I don't want to go outside. Don't. No. It's worse than getting off heroin, say the experts. My heart's beating 50 to the dozen like that. Sweat's pouring down my back. I'm in thumping headache. My lips are all dry. Dry, I don't know. I don't know where it is, I'm sure. Ada is not alone. There are many thousands like her who might well share her agony if they tried to stop. Come on, Ada, let's just open the door. Look, it's a smashing day outside. No. 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 Not going out. No. No. Ada's attempt to break away from Ativan followed a consultation with her current doctor. By day four, even the determined Ada had had enough. And I have to go back on it because I know I'm going to get worse and worse and worse. And I just don't want it to happen again. I'm hot, Tenyo. A good fresh air. I should most probably land somewhere where I don't want to land. Go really mad and have to go to a hospital or something like that. And I don't want that to happen. <laughs> Oh dear, yeah. When Ativan was first marketed in the mid seventies, there were no warnings to doctors that it might be addictive or produce serious side effects. But we found in Belgium a research scientist who warned at a conference run by Wyeth before the drug was on general sale that a controlled test on 30 patients showed four with withdrawal symptoms. One of these patients had taken about 10 milligrams of lorazepam, which was a rather high dosage. And uh, after 10 days, he stopped uh, this drug abruptly. And uh, I think that about 24, 36 hours afterwards, he, he presented a convulsive crisis, which is, should be interpreted as a withdrawal symptom. His warning was ignored, but there were to be more warnings from a number of respected sources. Most significantly, in 1980, Dr. Peter Tyra of Nottingham University reported withdrawal problems with all benzodiazepines and much more serious problems with Ativan, whether taken in high or low dosages. Wyeth, who for seven years had issued no warnings in the prescription notes, finally took notice. In 1982, the advice to doctors was changed to read, avoid long-term use, discontinue gradually. And that advice has never been updated. Professor Malcolm Lader questions even short-term use after another recent test. We've just 
in the middle of a study, um, which we actually had people on Ativan for four weeks because we were using it as a control for something else. We wanted to see what would happen. It's very difficult, even at the end of four weeks, to have an uneventful withdrawal. So we've stopped doing that. And I think it should not be used even for four weeks. Bernard Canavan is the American chairman of Wyeth Ahurst, makers of Ativan. He lives in some style in an exclusive suburb of Philadelphia. We caught up with him at his golf club. He declined to be interviewed on the grounds that his busy schedule wouldn't allow it. But there were important questions to ask him on behalf of sufferers like Ada. Hi, my name is Roger Cook from Central Television in Britain. I'm here to talk to you about Ativan. I said, get off the golf course. Get off this the golf course. <laughs> get off this golf course. I'm here to talk about Ativan. Get off this golf course. Would you let the microphone go? Get please? off this golf course. This is Why? private property. That gets yeah, but this off. is a very important subject. There is are it? a lot of patients who are suffering, having taken Ativan, marketed by your company, long after it would seem you knew there were real problems with it. Bugger off. Bugger off. Bugger off, or you've still got the chance. Why? Bugger off. No, no, no. Put the golf club. Get off of me. I want you to explain to us Get what. The hell off leave of the golf club alone. Get the hell out of here. I want you to explain to me on behalf of thousands of patients in Britain. Get the Back in England, the lawyers prepare their case. Already they speak for thousands of people who believe they're hooked on benzodiazepines and especially on Ativan. Essentially, we think this is what's called a warnings case. We should be looking at what the drug companies knew and when they knew it, or what they should have known and when they should have known it. We have to go back over the years that this drug has been on the market. We have to look at what is sometimes called the state of the art, how the manufacturers, the pharmaceutical industry, learned the propensities of this particular drug and other drugs like it. The number of people that are involved so far would indicate that this is the kind of litigation that will not go away. And if a sensible compromise can't be worked out, then I feel it inevitable that we will be going to court. Obviously, one hopes that as the legal system develops and as society realises through cases like thalidomide all those years ago and Opran more recently, that the system really needs to move with the times so that people, little people, individuals who want their compensation justifiably against the large multinationals don't have to wait for years and years. Ada might become the lawyer's test case. Like many addicts, she's been hoarding out of Anne. But, of course, she could only get it via her doctor. My doctor prescribed me tablets because I couldn't sleep. You've got confidence in your doctor. I didn't know till ten years later that there was drugs. I didn't know there was addictive. I've got a problem with Ativan, but it's not my problem. It's just someone else to sort out for me. It is not my problem. I mean, the doctors put me on it. They should sort it out. When we finally persuaded Ada to show us her hoard of Ativan, she had six years' supply. Though since last December, the government recommendation has been that patients should only be given four weeks' supply at a time. Ada's hoard was built up from repeat prescriptions without the doctor seeing her. Then Ada's lawyer asked for her case notes. I lost all faith in Dr. Rangmani because that morning on Monday, August the 10th, as I say, I phoned up the receptionist for my prescription. She put me through to the doctor, and the doctor turned around and said, I'm sorry, Mrs Nisty, no more Ativan. Armed with Ada's Ativan hoard in a carrier bag, we went to see her former doctor. As well as the makers, doctors also face legal actions, in their case, for failing to heed the warnings about Ativan. My name's Roger Cook from Central Television. Oh, I wanted no. to speak to you about your ways of prescribing Ativan. Oh, I don't prescribe anymore now. But you had been prescribing it for some people for as long as 11 years. Everyone is prescribing. I'm not the only one to prescribe. But as far ago as 1984, it was known that there were very serious problems with it. Um, yes, yeah, since then I started uh, just uh, uh, the, and disguise the patients. No, you didn't, because Mrs. Nissity, for example, was yes. prescribed it until a few weeks ago when I... there were threats of legal action, and you only stopped then. No, I warned her so many times. Uh, according to Mr. Nissity, you didn't, and I wouldn't say yes. that this was entirely I... responsible, would you? Look, this is the kind of pills you've been prescribing for her. Because it has been known for, for many years that there have been problems, and by 1984 there was an enormous amount of evidence that I'm it was dangerous. I'm quite aware of the facts, and I always warn my patients, and it's not, uh, I mean, it's up to patients. If they still want it, it's their responsibility. 
As this leading article in the general practitioner confirms, doctors often blame patients for their Ativan problems. Despite their addiction, they're apparently expected not to ask for more. The article also warns doctors that up to a thousand may be sued for the way they prescribe the drug and that repeat prescriptions without consultation are unjustified and legally dangerous. Over the past month, we've conducted a survey amongst more than 500 Ativan addicts. Asked if their doctors had given long-term repeat prescriptions without consultation, 88% said yes and only 12% said no. One woman who took part in the survey had just been given three months' supply on a repeat prescription without her doctor seeing her. Following severe postnatal depression, Anne Broomfield has been on tranquilizers for 15 years, and Ativan, in particular, for six. The withdrawal symptoms are so dreadful, they're so terrifying, and the fear is the worst. So what are those symptoms like, the withdrawal symptoms? They're so awful because you think you're going mad, and the fear is so... It's so hard to describe it. You are so terrified. You can't bear to be on your own. And you really think you are going mad. And when you tried to come off, were you given any support by anybody? Um, two years ago, I tried to come off. I saw my doctor. And I used to see him every fortnight. And I got down to three, uh, three halves. And um, he was quite helpful. But what did he tell you in the end? In the end, he said... You'll have to stay on them until a substitute comes up. Dr. Pierce, yeah. my name's Roger Cook from Central Television. I'm here to ask you about your Ativan prescribing habits. Why have you been prescribing it for Mrs. Broomfield? Mrs. Broomfield, it, it was first prescribed by a psychiatrist and was continued. She'd been under the continuous care of the psychiatrist, and she. Uh, She's has, been asking you to get her off it and, desperately. And I. Uh, she has succeeded with my help in getting it down to about a tenth of what it was originally. This may be the case, but you should have got her off it. You know it's an addictive drug, don't you? It is a very difficult drug to get, to get anyone off, and I have been doing my best. She says that you've been actually saying, give up, you'll be on it forever until they discover a cure, stick with it. That is nonsense. What do you think she's going to do now? What do you think the hope for her is and why are you continuing to prescribe when the recommendation now is that because, it should only be prescribed because, for, for because four if weeks? I if I stop them now she would have an acute bout of anxiety and not be able to cope we have tried just stopping it and she goes she gets extremely anxious about it dr pierce's dilemma is one facing doctors all over the country but in his case, and remembering the warnings about stopping Ativan suddenly, there was to be a twist in the story. Well, he rang me and he said, I must stop the filming of this interview, otherwise there'd be no Ativan, I'll have to get another doctor. You wrote it down, what he said? Yes, yes. He said, um, I've done my best and st I'm still trying to help you. What was he? Well, no, because I haven't seen him for about three months. And the last time, um, he just said I'll have to stay on them until there's a substitute. You're obviously frightened of doing this interview, aren't you? Yes, I'm terrified. Terrified. And to you, stopping Ativan like that is a real threat. I, I couldn't live without Ativan. I'm desperate to get off them, but I can't live without them because I can't do it on my own, I need help. With an estimated quarter of a million British addicts to Ativan, what can be done for them and how can they be got off? It's extremely hard work, both for the patient and for myself. I, it, the patients suffer a great deal, they're constantly in contact, um, they come back, they take a year to treat, and it's a lot of very hard work. We've brought Ada to Charing Cross to see if Dr. Holstrom can get her unhooked from Ativan. Unfortunately, the treatment is so expensive at £2,000 per week that it can only be available for the fortunate few. Hello, Ada. Hello. Dr. Holstrom takes the depressing but well, realistic view that, that the majority of men and women suffering from Ativan addiction will be hooked for the rest of their lives.
Day four and Ada's withdrawal symptoms are now painfully obvious. Try not to lean too far back or you will fall over there. Well, she's been in hospital for three days now and she's a lot worse. She's a lot more symptomatic, very anxious, not sleeping, off her food. But that's because we've stopped the Ativan and we've transferred her onto Valium. So she's now taking a rather larger dose of Valium than the equivalent of the Ativan, but we're now cutting it down gradually and uh, hope to have her off it in about 10 days' time. Ada, listen to me. You're all right. You're not going to faint. You're not going to faint. Dr. Cowles, help me. Yeah, I'm helping you. You're all right, Ada. Just relax. Relax. Listen to me. You're all right. Let's walk you over to the seat and you can sit down, okay? In hospital or at home, her constant complaint is that her condition isn't her fault. It was a doctor who gave her Ativan 11 years ago to help her feel better, but she eventually felt far worse, and that was before trying to come off it. She's not had anything to eat. We'll get you something. I don't want nothing. Uh, I could eat a banana. Could you? Well, that's better than nothing, isn't it? I had some, some too. <clears throat> Ada, how are you feeling now? Rotten. <laughs> Rotten. I feel really bad. I'm tired. I want to go and go to sleep. Haven't been sleeping well? No. You seem to have lost some weight. Yeah, I'm not eating. But do you think it's going to be worth it? I hope so. I'd never go back on them again. <laughs> Believe me, I'll fight it. I'll get through it. As my doctor explained, that I'm going to get worse to get better. But you are going to make it. Yes, yes. Fifteen years ago, the doctor's witch asked whether there was any clinical need for Ativan to join five other benzodiazepines already on sale in the UK. But it was a lucrative market. Wyeth's product went to number two in popularity and number one for addiction. I think that an ethical company like Wyeth, and they are an ethical company, they, it is not in their interest, in their public image as an ethical company, to continue to be associated with a compound of this sort which is causing these problems. There are alternatives, uh, like even like Valium or any of the others, which are safer and give less problems. But of course there's a, an international um, aspect to this, that uh, the the drug is profitable and no doubt Wyatt would be very sorry to see their large international profits disappear if they had to withdraw it. Well, that is profits before patients, isn't it? In a way, yes, I think that's so. The question is when does the, when does the balance tip to the point where the drug should be withdrawn? I would argue that if that point has now been reached, then no doubt Wyatt would uh, argue the opposite. Back on the golf course, the chairman of Wyeth still didn't want to answer questions. I want you to explain to me. I want you to explain. Leave the. I want you to explain to me why it is. I want you to explain to me. I want you to explain to me why it is that your company goes on marketing a drug which you know is addictive. You know it's addictive, don't you? Ah! Look, you know the drug is addictive. We're in danger of getting yourself killed. In danger of getting myself killed? Well, I'll stand behind it then. Is that all you have to say? Thousands of people good. addicted to good, addicted to a drug that your company is marketing, knowing there are problems. I wish you could get over the bloody man that manufactured them. I got a bleeding gun and shoot him if we were going to bleed in prison to get people out of what I'm going through. They don't really, I've gone through bloody hell. However confident Ada and her husband may be, doctors at Charing Cross say her two weeks of painful withdrawal here may be followed by as much as two years more at home. We hope she makes it. Wyeth, who make Ativan, did offer a proper interview following their chairman's golfing exploits, but then withdrew, saying that the regulatory bodies didn't differentiate between Ativan and any other benzodiazepine. Cold comfort for the tens of thousands of ordinary folk like Ada, for whom a short-term trauma turned into an agonizing long-term addiction. <laughs>